design thinking comes in. It's a frame of mind, as Anant had uh, said, systematic approach to solve a particular problem. Yes, a systematic approach. But what is that system? Uh, you know, Ritesh, you may think five steps may work, but for me, two steps may work. How do we come to that point of understanding? That is where design thinking starts becoming relatable in real time. How do organizations translate it into ROI? So much time, so much effort, collective effort goes in. How do we translate it into ROI? Okay, I now have come up with a solution. How do I turn this epic into feature, feature into stories, and turn it into agile release trains that I'm going to now go out and, and start giving to the customer? Does this really meet his need? These are the kind of questions that cloud organizations today. And while they understand it, maybe theoretically, it is the practical application and the preparedness of the people. That is the real question. And this is where we as team businesses come in. And we've been able to design some very simple, very out of the box, extremely current and relevant uh, tools, techniques, and approaches with which we are able, we have been working with clients and helping them. And we hope that today we can really expand this. And we have fantastic online modules and classroom modules. So in the next slide, we'd just like to talk about Vinces. Sorry, we're having some technical issues. Just the next slide. Hold on. So Winston has been uh, in, in the training and talent development space. And if you notice that we have about 450 highly skilled professionals working across technical and behavioral. We've conducted programs for ITs, BPOs, ITS, manufacturing, and across various verticals. We have our, a global presence. We've covered over uh, 150,000 participants across India and other countries. So whenever it comes to training, people always turn to Vinces. And if nothing, we always look at going the extra mile and custom making something for people based on what their requirements are, because we firmly believe that one, uh, one glove does not fit all. So today, especially with design thinking, because all of you come from different industries, different organizations, different verticals, we want to make sure that whatever we provide is custom made for you, as we'll continue with the I think the slides are just taking a little longer, so you'll have to bear with us. Now, good design is actually a lot harder to notice than poor design. Have you noticed when something is very sleek, it looks fantastic? People don't really notice it till it is 100% functional. How many of you have noticed the, the elevator panels um, that, that are there? Do you remember the big elevator panels when we were much younger, uh, which were really big and chunky? And today you just have a glass board with the numbers mentioned on it, and they're just touch. Now, soon elevators are going to become voice activated. Now, these are things we don't notice and very quickly start taking for granted. And that is what is good design. Bad design, on the other hand, screams of absolute inadequacies, making itself very, very noticeable, very garish, and actually very difficult to sustain. In the next slide, we'll be talking about uh, you know, one of the people who revolutionized design in such a big way. If you think about how the phones have been designed, if you look at Steve Jobs uh, and you look at most of you must have, you know, a smartphone or an Apple phone. Design is a funny word. Some people think design means how things look. No. Design, you have to go deeper. It's how it works. It's how it yields results for people. Uh, how it makes it easier for you, more functional for you. There was a time when, you know, doors had to be locked. Today, you have biometric locks. 
these are home locks i'm not even talking about banks and offices just look around you and design in so many ways has changed but here is the big problem most people think design has to do with manufacturing it has to do with hardware no design can even be how you put your teams together that's also a design how you design your processes to get things done faster and more efficient that's also designed in a certain way the problem is design is so married just to manufacturing and product and and we are going wrong in the next slide i'm going to point out to you how that's going wrong um if you notice in this slide there's an image of the old irons that we used to have or even today they are used in many parts of the world by people who do laundry now if you notice it's made of pure iron it carries hot coal it's very very heavy very difficult to carry uh, also you need to use coal to get it done so if you're traveling can you use this no in the 1950s and 60s data rams the designer for brown came and what he did was design through elimination and replacement he completely eliminated the past plastic elements components uh, sorry the iron components and bought in plastic he bought newer products newer materials plastic was a very new material back then and the only thing that he really kept metallic was the base because it's only the base that touches suddenly you had a portable iron you had a lightweight iron you had something that was easy to carry that was not a fire disaster back then people had just started traveling for work so a mobile world needed things like this and so he met the need of the customer by designing products now that was the era of manufacturing therefore product design was very very big now if you look at the next uh image that i have are the heinz ketchup bottles and we all remember ketchup being in a glass bottle which was difficult to carry it could break easily the nozzle was very small you could not get anything in to get all the product out but when you have a heinz ketchup bottle a if you notice the product itself is completely inverted you can squeeze it very very easily you get the product out and you can always open the nozzle and you're able to get all the remaining product out now if you notice how easy was this they just replaced the glass bottle with a plastic bottle changed the design and made it easy even for old people with joint pains or little children with small fingers they were able to squeeze the bottle and get the ketchup they wanted now these are product designs now let's go towards the logo that i have below blockbuster studios if any of you have been to the us you'll know this back then black hello back then blockbuster was the only way you could go and get your dvds or your vhs cassettes netflix came in and said you know what you don't have to do this we'll be very happy to send it by mail to you and suddenly you started getting these dvds by mail i didn't have to leave home i just had to put it back in and drop it in my mailbox and it went back to netflix and there was a little monthly subscription which even blockbuster used to charge but they eliminated the the entire effort of going to a store and they started coming into the mailbox and by then suddenly things started going digital online blockbuster did not look at the warning signs and blockbuster continued to carry the entire inventory with them look how the inventory elimination happened and netflix loaded everything on servers today if you notice where are we in the middle of a pandemic who are we who are we turning to most netflix for all of our content and our entertainment blockbuster on the other hand has gone to youtube too late what was a innovator in the market became an imitator in the market and today is struggling to survive in the market these are real case studies right in front of us here the process had to be changed the product had to be digitized and the teams had to work and keep themselves ahead in the game now if you look at the other logo i have pill pack anybody knows what pill pack is all about anybody would like to just type in the in the chat box what pill pack is about have you heard of it anybody here who gets medication at home if anybody has 
elderly parents who need medication or if you live alone and you need medicine, what you do is you go to the nearest pharmacy, you buy your medic medicine, right? Correct, Tina? Yes, you said it. They send you medical packs. Now, for example, if I'm diabetic and I need to take my medicine two times a day, I will send my prescription to them via app. They will send me my medication in a box and they will tell me that this is your six o'clock medication. This is your 12 o'clock medication. This is your eight o'clock medication. So now Toshiba remembers her medication and she takes her little pouch with her to work so that she can continue taking her medication when she's at work. Isn't that wonderful? You make taking medicines so easy. And the app will send you a reminder. Toshiba, did you take your afternoon medicine? Uh, your medicine was ordered six days ago. Now you have three days worth of medicine remaining. Please order uh, some more medicine so that we can ship it to you on time and you don't miss your course. They send you inhalers. They send you all kinds of medicines. And on the next slide, I'll show you what their kit looks like. Yes, Satish, NetMeds is correct, but NetMeds uh, in many ways kind of quickly imitated the idea from them. And I'll just show you in the next slide. We're just loading it up. I'm sorry, because I've used images. It's taking longer. Here you go. A better, simpler pharmacy. Now, if you look at the box design, it's white in color, clean and simple. The font is in black so that people who have glasses or elderly people will have no trouble reading it. If you look at the little pouches, the time is mentioned, the days of the week is mentioned, your medicine is sorted out for you, they're delivered to you monthly or weekly, and they include any other additional pharmaceutical items you require. For example, bandages you may need, or you may need little disinfectants or little creams that you may need. And this just makes the entire process so easy. And if you look at the title we have, Design thinking is common sense applied in real time. Anything that I'm talking about here, and especially today, the way everything has gotten digitized, if you are just able to make a few changes here and there, suddenly you have a delight factor ready for the customer out there. So it is common sense applied in real time. If you look at what Uber Eats has done, it was nothing but common sense applied in real time that we have our cars we have the, the the entire you know supply chain ready let us just start supplying different things not just people but even other things there's so much that is out there if you look at dunzo how many of you use dunzo especially within the india market if you look at dunzo here what they have done is that they have mobilized people who had two wheelers to go out and get things for people who really didn't want to go out for example, if my friend lives an hour away and I visited her over the weekend and I left my phone charger at her place, now I have to again drive an hour to her house at a time when she's available, pick up my charger and come back. That is about two to three hours. Yes, Lakshmi Kant, it's brilliant, isn't it, Dunzo? And today, I, we all use Dunzo for just about everything. Now I have somebody who in half an hour will be able to just drive, pick up something for me and bring it back. We use them for medicines. They are bringing you your groceries. They are bringing you anything else that you need. Uh, a lot of paperwork for offices, they have become like your office runners. Now look at the gap that was identified. Two wheelers, a lot of people with licenses who can drive, who are willing to go and do that for you for a small nominal fee. I don't mind paying 20, 40, 50 rupees extra if it's saving me time, it's saving me the effort and somebody else is doing it. If you look at it from the grand scheme of things, I take my car out, I spend so much time, I spend so much petrol doing it. And Dunzo just makes my life so easy. So design thinking is common sense applied in real time. And as Team Vinces, we are uh, we are very proud of the fact that we've designed uh, you know, programs using some existing tools and the methodologies wherein we really get people to start thinking. The problem with a lot of traditional offices has been that people are very used to executing, 
today we're putting them in charge and saying you're not just executing you're actually thinking implementing and delivering take charge and that's something brilliant that design thinking does it allows you to take charge and become game changers in the market and if you're looking at having your teams become real game changers in the market design thinking is the only tool people say design thinking is a new tool not necessarily right from the time when we had the fishbone diagrams and we had the five eye techniques this is just an evolution of that except today it has become a complete conglomeration of all these fantastic tools that we have and it's turned into like a master tool that uh, that organizations are using and finding fantastic returns out of it in the next slide we'll be covering that aspect now just four four days ago i got a message from a very very reliable source now this is design thinking in real time we are in the middle of a pandemic indian railways has actually joined in three good trains linked together it is 2 kilometers long it has 177 wagons three engines three brake vans the lead engine in the front controls the other two engines they're using radio wave te- radio wave technology no extra cables the average speed is 80 kilometers per hour this was launched to ensure essential goods are delivered to people without any problem now here design thinking came in using existing resources we don't have the time to innovate we don't have the time to go back to the drawing board we don't have time to disrupt but this is the time to collaborate so what are the resources that we can collaborate what are the things we can bring together and the tools that we teach are exactly these design thinking is not just about spending a lot of money and going back to the drawing board it's also looking at the very obvious and saying what is the best that i can do to be a game changer in the market with my existing resources and let that be my starting point eventually we will invest and do bigger things but this is my starting point this is a brilliant example another actual example is again the indian railways where they have all used old trains which have all the facilities they have washrooms at the end of every compartment they're linked people can walk in and out and these are old trains that are just sitting there so they turned them into hospitals and quarantine rooms for the pandemic such a brilliant utilization of existing resources the berths are there the beds are already there they already have water storage facility they already have kitchen pantries how do we utilize it and this is design thinking at its simplest and best again like i said it is common sense applied in real time in the next slide we talk about the tools we will cover now these two tools that we're talking about on you know new tools per se but how do we use them so kano model is taken from the six sigma tool and then we talk about the five steps of design thinking first and most important is empathize now again if we go back to the indian railway example the whole issue is i need to ensure that essential goods and goods are delivered to people in a pandemic that is where the empathy aspect comes in you sit and you define the problem what are essential goods once you come up with that you ideate and you brainstorm now this is where the tricky uh, this is the tricky aspect because in ideation every idea seems fantastic here we teach a very nice filtration technique where we help people filter ideas and we have used this with a couple of our clients already and they have seen some brilliant outcomes where they realize that a we are able to eliminate net conflict when we use the filtration technique we are able to filter which is the easiest to use idea we are able to come up with collective team effort and we understand that ideas that are difficult to implement are not impossible so we will still keep them but maybe not immediately so filtration during ideation is very very important and here we really teach them some very integral finer tools as to how to go about ideating and filtering simultaneously then once you have come up with your fixed set of ideas that you really think are implementable in real time we start with the prototyping phase now here we work with them to come up with prototypes either on paper or if you need technical experts we have technical experts who come in and then really work with the teams and prototype whether it is technical expertise in manufacturing or whether it is in the it side or in services we have experts 
who come and help you design the prototype and then run the test. Once you run the test, you understand that, okay, these things went right. These things could be better. If implemented over an X period of time, this is the ROI we can expect. Now, once we implement, we realize whether what we have implemented based on the Kano model that we have right over here, whether something is a normal requirement, whether it was a basic requirement, or whether this is something that totally delights the customer. Now, if going back to the pill pack. Now, if you notice, they are nothing but a pharmaceutical company that is delivering medication. But look how they delighted the customer by just making the entire process of consuming their medication so user friendly. And that delights the customer. And customers look for delight points. That is where you're able to hook the customer. Here we come in as a team and we really work with your people and say, are you delighting your customer? The more you delight, the longer the lifespan of the customer is with you. Otherwise, very soon, delight points become basic requirements. Assume all pharmaceutical companies copy what PillPack is doing. Suddenly, it's no longer a delight. Now, PillPack has to stay ahead of the game. The next game is that they're going to work with people who are terminally ill and have somebody deliver it and monitor it. It is already something that they're working on. Providing a healthcare facility, uh, facility provider plus the medication that is already in their prototype stage. So design thinking is also how to stay a step ahead of everybody else so that you are innovators and not imitators in the market. The next slide that we'll talk about. Yes. A lot of organizations have come to us and said, well, it's great to have an idea. It's fantastic to have a prototype. How do we implement it in real time? And we have a team of agile specialists. I myself am agile certified. And we, after training people, helping them come up with those ideas, we then help them break it down further into actual deliverable parts, which the client would want. For example, if you go back to the pill pack example that I'm sharing, somebody must have looked at it and said, okay, this is a pain point. This is how we delight the customer. Let's start with designing user-friendly boxes. Let's start making it easy to read. Let's break it into smaller doses. And these became smaller stories for them. And this is where we bring in our expertise. Uh, we, as Team Vinces, have a set of people who are trained on Agile. We have behavioral trainers who are also trained on Agile. So we are able to translate all of those aspects into actual deliverables for the customers that come in and for the participants that participate in our sessions. So if you look, we look at the problem solving. So a lot of people at the beginning of the session had talked of problem solving. Once we create that, yes, problem solving is a big part of it. And then we go into the entire ideation and iteration cycle. And once that is done, then we start going into the features, the epics, the features, the stories, the deliverables, the agile release trains, the first round, the second round, the product owners, how they can go about delivering it and maintain that consistency. Once you have this formula right, then it is only incremental that helps you stay ahead in the game. In the next slide, Yes. Design thinking, your way forward blueprint. So we actually give people a complete blueprint of what, where they are and where they want to be. So, I mean, there's no point in training people just on design thinking and leaving them with a stimulated mind, but not knowing what to do with it. So complete end-to-end -end solution providing is also something that we do, where we sit with people, we come in, we're able to provide it for them and create a blueprint. So our, our request with everybody always is to give us real life problems from your organization. We've had a lot of organizations turn to us. Unfortunately, we didn't take their permission, so we don't want to name them, uh, with whom we actually uh, roll up our sleeves and start getting things done. And we have seen some fantastic results that have come out of this, where we, where we see small aspects that were ignored earlier have turned products into absolute delight points for the customer. Not just that, many people have even internally started working within their own teams and saying, hey, we want to have high functioning, high potential teams. And when we have worked with them, we've actually come out with teams uh, 
So here is another aspect of design thinking. Very often we tell people, why do you work in your team? Agile people is a big part of design thinking as well when we turn it into agile. And they said, well, I work for the experience. I work for the designation, for the money. And we say, if we take that away from you, then why do you work? And that's a big aha moment, which is also a big part of design thinking. Why change what works beautifully? But we do force people to change, to look at what works and make it even better. And we create a whole blueprint with them. So it's a very joint effort that we create over here. Uh, On the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So what does Team Winces bring to the table? Obviously, a lot of people want just the training. So it's a one or two day training program. We introduce all the tools that we have talked about, plus the filtration techniques. Um, Teams can share actual situations during the session. We help them come up with solutions using the design thinking tools. Training and consulting, end-to-end consulting is another approach where we work simultaneously across various aspects of design thinking processes. We help you design a complete ROI matrix around this. Then a prototype is implemented in real time using agile methodology and the final success is measured using the matrix that we design as the product lifespan expands and the customer requirements are there. Uh, On the next slide, We'll talk about why and how this is so important. Just a minute, the next slide's loading. It's taking a little longer than usual. So what are the outcomes of design thinking? Innovation and creativity, as was mentioned in the beginning of the session. Constant improvisation. Agile teams and leadership. Now, this is very, very important because it's a mindset. How do you focus on servant leadership? How do you create teams that are willing to take the lead, go back, how people are able to work with one another and understand that the greater good is in collective collaborative effort. Increased ROI, there are organizations that have gone up to the extent of increasing their ROI by 300% just by having design thinking and eliminate sluggish processes. That's one of the biggest things. You clean out the system, old processes, old methods, old methodologies, people who are blocks, Uh, towards the growth of teams and organizations. There's another image here about Netflix, if you notice. And the reason why I kept it here is Netflix did a fantastic study called the Chaos Monkey. So in many ways, without realizing it, they were preparing for this pandemic. Netflix deliberately went out and, and actually trashed their servers. They destroyed their servers. They cut up their wires. Uh, they gave an entire uh, team uh, a day off or a week off and said, don't come to work. Let's see, how do we function without you? They broke servers to see how do uh, teams function without uh, um, you know, a few servers if they go wrong or if a few w- wires stop working, what happens? And they were able to notice how much a load can the existing uh, infrastructure take. By doing all that, they actually without realizing it, prepared for this pandemic. If you notice, Disney Hotstar or Hulu or Voot are not able to deliver content as smoothly as Netflix is able to do without buffering. And this happened as an outcome of them doing a study called Chaos Monkey, where they said, if a monkey went into the server and destroyed the wires, what would happen to us? And this was a part of design thinking that they were working on called the disruption style of design thinking, where if you disrupt something which is going beautifully, how can we sustain it? What is our quick backup that we have available, which has worked out in their favor today? 
so netflix has today become a leader and a pioneer in design thinking in many many ways and and those are the kind of learnings that we bring when we conduct our sessions those are the learnings that we bring as to what can we now do to translate this into your organization and how can we make it even better using design thinking tools uh thank you so much for giving me your time and listening so patiently um thank you thank you like the example um if anybody would like to uh, ask questions uh, please feel free to type them out and i'd be very happy um to to answer them and um any anything else that you would like to know about us and our teams and what we bring to the table we'd be very happy uh, how is it different from innovative thinking satish yes so satish um innovation is once the ideation phase that i talked about once you have got your ideas then you start implementing it the implementation phase is innovation <laughs> thank you thank you amir uh, so the implementation is innovation design thinking is a step before that any a uh, video book or design expert in the world that we can follow there are quite a few that's a very good question chawla what i'll do is i'll email some of those links to you i think that would be better uh, can you put some more light on using design thinking and lean framework yes abhijit so what we do is once people have filtered all the ideas so there's a very complex uh, methodology that we utilize in the filtration which is inspired by stanford university's idu methodology where we filter all the ideas and once we have the entire filtration then what we do is that we start with um a, a, a translating it into the entire agile lean framework and the agile manifesto that you have created and we start putting it out there as to what is doable what is possible based on that the teams start getting allocated so in many ways we disrupt the existing teams and we start creating a newer high functioning team once we have that in place we start marrying it across different functions and see what is the kind of uh, uh, what is the kind of dependency and interdependency we can create once that is done then we bring in all the project managers the scrum masters and start with the delegation and the roi framework gets created simultaneously so it's pretty much a simultaneous process once the design thinking and lean framework is created thank you so much priyanka i'm glad you liked it how is it different from ucd can you just give me the full form of ucd so that i don't uh, you know quote a incorrect example how is user centered design user centered design is again as uh, innovation thinking was becomes an offshoot it is a outcome of design thinking design thinking is looking at what is there and coming up with every possible solution it may even sound ridiculous at that point in time or completely uh, you know um, unachievable but it is acceptable in user centered design you focus only on the user user interface and user experience which is an offshoot after design thinking so we can say design thinking is the first stage of development absolutely omkar you've nailed it yes it is the very first stage let me give you another example taking the you know smartphones that we have uh, can we say design thinking works with old classical culture or organization needs culture organization first then apply uh, actually a design thinking does not necessarily work with old classical culture because old classical culture is very hierarchical and therefore the hierarchy tends to at some point stifle it we need more fluid teams so at times we can either create a whole different fluid team that does the design thinking and then gets implemented in the old classical structure which is fine or you will have to most probably disrupt it in india at least we're seeing or in south asia most comes up with the idea to implement it in the old hire a part of design i'm sorry i think i missed a question somewhere here somebody had asked do you just mind repeating it uh, a true agile transformation would cater to this just look at the agile principles yes yes agile principles would do that but often in uh, because design thinking in the latest agile framework uh, i think agile 4.0 does talk about design thinking does talk about customer centricity and says that it is a mindset but what are the tools that they will use they don't talk about it so here design thinking talks about the tools also 
Chawla, you can't hear me. Hello. Mm, my my volume is is good enough. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry that my voice is breaking. Um, answer regarding classical. Yes. Okay, Amir. I'm sorry. I'll repeat that. Can you hear me? Just send me a quick little yes or no, or I'll increase the volume. Okay, great. Chawla, you can hear me now. Okay. I'm I'm very sorry, Amir. So. So yes, uh, in in the old or it is difficult. it is doable but ideally we prefer fluid structures for design thinking um i'm sorry why are you not able to hear me um, um my, my volume is is at maximum i don't want it echoing no okay krishna okay okay i'm glad i'm glad anand okay Okay, good. Any other questions that you have? What is the impetus of exploring design thinking? Well, one of the key things for you to explore uh, myself. Uh, if you are looking at getting ahead and being uh, Lakshmi Kant, I'm answering your question. If you're looking at getting ahead in the market, then design thinking is a fantastic tool to keep you eons ahead of everybody else. Um, and, and that is a brilliant tool, which is readily available and customizable to organizations. Otherwise, what is working for you will continue working for you, but we just don't know how long it will keep you relevant in the market. So when it talks about being relevant, so Lakshmi Kant, answering your question, uh, there are so many organizations that have come into incubation, become successful, and died very uh, in front of us. Food Panda is one of them. They did not explore design thinking as a way of growth and improvisation. They just became imitators and felt, okay, if this is what we're doing and it works for us, um, then it's great. Today, that is not how you survive in the market. So yes, it is um, a, a fantastic tool to stay ahead. Amir, answering your question again, um, if you have a hierarchical organization, it is fine. You can always have a design thinking team separately. And once you have the design thinking team, they can come up with the tools, the, the way forward. That can be implemented by a, a hierarchical organization. Having said that, ideally, we would prefer design thinking is done across the entire organization as a habit, and you have fluid teams. But in South Asia, where hierarchy is still very important, we tend to have a different team that, that comes up with all of this. The only problem is a lot of thinking gets centralized by that team. So we, we would prefer that you know everybody is, um, is, is, is thinking out of the box. But initially, to introduce it, that's also a great way. How can we apply something very traditional like hardware industry, which involve architect, designer, and contractor? If you look at uh, uh, industries like manufacturing, Satish, as you, you know, pointed out, um, here you have to look at design from a very functional point of view because it's a traditional industry. I, I started the session with elevator panels. So here it is the, the, the user experience, the touch and the feel uh, that is very, very important to people. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, even in the software industry where people are working with traditional uh, softwares and with traditional architects, uh, arch software architects who are used to designing something, be able to look at what are the pain points in that and how can we start changing those smaller pain points. And that is where the seeds of design thinking start coming in. For example, there is an organization uh, which uh, deals heavily with a lot of telecom clients and they have very, very traditional structure. But what they've started doing is bringing in design thinking elements when it comes to data, data migration, data utilization. So obviously, a lot of design thinking can be utilized. In traditional industries, it will take a little longer and more effort. 
Um, if you have any more questions, I'd suggest that you do keep them going. And I'll try my best to uh, respond to them via email, if that works for you. Thank you, Satish. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. So, Shiva, if you have a feedback, if you can, can paste it in the chat box, uh, please. Thank you, Toshiba, for uh, this wonderful session. I hope everyone uh, likes it out. Uh, so we will be sending out feedback links to all of your email IDs. I would insist you all to take some time out from your busy schedule and uh, give us your honest feedbacks. And uh, I would insist to uh, follow all of our Winces channels because uh, we not only provide uh, webinars on soft skills trainings, but we are also there in 300 more domains like project management, IT, IT governance, uh, technology, Autodesk, uh, manufacturing, architecture, construction, uh, even in media entertainment. So if you wish to attend any session, you just have to uh, check, keep checking our website and our all social media handles. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.